Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I just watched Oppenheimer, but I don't want to give no spoiler reviews because there's a lot of you that have not watched the film yet. So I don't want to spoil the movie for you. All I'm going to say is that the movie is three hours long. It's all dialogue heavy, okay? As most people have already mentioned, it's dialogue heavy. It is not no action film and and none of this comedy or or like the previous um Christopher Nolan films where it's like Batman or or similar to Tenant even though majority of people that that I I've seen online or watched on YouTube they all say this movie Tenant was not a good film there was a lot of things wrong with Tenant okay but I do have to say that even though the movie was three hours long, it was still intriguing of how Oppenheimer became this person to create the hydrogen bomb because he was the type of person that didn't, at, at the beginning of the movie, he felt like he wasn't going to be anything. Okay? So, Killian Murphy did great as, as a main lead. He was great. And the special effects, I guess if it's not, I guess since since it said that Christopher Nolan did not use uh, CGI, I still feel like he did pretty good. Like the film was pretty good. Um, depending on how you watch this film, because some of you are just going to watch it regular, no, no IMAX or no Dolby. It all depends on where you go watch this. If you watch it in IMAX, if you watch it Dolby, if you watch it in... Um, regular or if there's another lasers or whatever else they have um it does it does it does uh make a difference okay it makes a huge difference depending on where you watch it so the the format that i watched it was great um the some of the explosions were pretty good very loud in the auditorium but like I said, it depends on where you go watch the film. You cannot just say, oh, I'm watching it in at a regular theater. Just nothing special. Just watching it. No Dolby, no IMAX, no surround sound or whatever they, they have now for the Max to intrigue you or to keep you uh, intrigued with the film. So all the actors were great. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. was was great as, as always. Um... I do have to say that <laughs> there was this one scene, okay, the explosion scene that everybody uh, is going for because when you watch the film, you're expecting the explosion because that's what they probably showed you in the in the trailer, okay? They probably showed you in the trailer that there was going to be this explosion, but what's crazy is that first you get to see this the explosion and it's all silent throughout the the throughout the film or that portion where you 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 know that the explosion is going on but you don't hear anything okay it's all silent it's like wow we're all intrigued for the explosion and and you see it all crystal clear and and bright and and it's just great but like i said um after that like a, a minute or two later you do experience the explosion out of nowhere it just you just hear it like the after effects of the explosion so it's just a random explosion depending on how you watch the film like i said if you watch it in dolby or imax or and not in a regular auditorium because we just watch it in a regular auditorium i don't think you feel anything or you hear anything special but like i said if you're watching it in a uh, in the auditorium like a special imax or dolby then the explosion just goes bam, out of nowhere. You're not expecting it. You're just expecting like, oh, it's probably going to happen nah, in a bit or five seconds later. But no, it happens two, three minutes later. And that explosion is crazy. Yeah. And some people got, got um, it took them by surprise. You didn't expect the explosion to happen like a minute a minute or two later after the the initial explosion so the other thing that i do have to say is that another a person that you didn't expect in the film was josh peck from drake and josh like um 
you don't expect him to be in films anymore or, or to be acting too much or to be doing anything uh, because like people people just don't end up acting anymore. Like, for example, if you look at Jeanette McCurdy, for example, she's not really acting anymore as, as she used to back in iCarly and uh, films like Fred. So that's that's what I'm saying. Like, it's you, you don't expect these people to be on on screen. But when they're on screen, it's it's pretty good. Like the film is all around the explosion, but leading to the explosion, you could probably say, yeah, the movie, the movie can get for some people that don't like dialogue heavy movies and and you expect action or you expect it to be comedies or you expect like when you watch a horror film that you expect horror, you expect to be to be throughout the whole film like, oh, oh man, what's gonna happen? Is this scene scary is this like a, a jump scare like you, you're you putting your mind that you that there's going to be a jump scare uh throughout the whole film but because this is like uh um like i said this is this is more of like a uh, sort of a documentary type film three hours long mostly talking mostly heavy heavy dialogue which is the reason that some people, okay, some people said this film is boring because it's all dialogue heavy. Most people don't like documentaries or, or films that are dialogue heavy. But I do have to say that it was a great film compared to all the other movies that have been out, like comedies that people say, oh, I'm going to watch the funniest movie of the year. And then when you go watch the film, you're you're like, what? How how did they how did the person or the company say the funniest oh um the funniest or or the best movie of the year when it wasn't the best movie of the year? So with that being said, this film was was pretty good. Um like I like I forgot to mention, most of this film Christopher Nolan says he didn't use CGI, okay? He did it all physically or he did it differently which wasn't CGI because he said that uh, most people do CGI. So he probably looked at movies like 2001 A Space Odyssey, which some people find that movie boring because it's mostly musical. It's, mu it's mostly based around images that are just still images. Like nowadays, if you, like, if you remember back in the day with um, computers, with the uh, screensavers, it just used to be, like that, and then they just add music to the screensaver, which to me was pretty cool back in the day when you had screensavers and and the screensaver would pop up and you would have it be bouncing around the uh, the whole screen and see how it got from one corner to the next or maybe a maze as a screensaver. But that was pretty cool back then. So I do have to say that two thousand, like for example, two thousand one, a space odyssey. That one was great because it was uh intriguing like the story was intriguing even though you 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 do get like like this movie like Oppenheimer which is mostly dialogue heavy like i just mentioned and you're like i'm expecting action i'm expecting comedy i'm expecting horror i'm expecting something interesting to happen but throughout the film you have to hear the dialogue and you and you kind of get an idea of what's going on throughout the movie so for some people, I do have to say, yeah, it's true. The movie is boring for some, but for others like me, I found it to be a pretty decent film that I've watched in the last couple of years because all these other films I've watched, I've been disappointed. It's not like, wow, I've, I've, I'm expect, I've watched movies better than Oppenheimer. No, like the last couple of years, like I'll just say this to win the, the, to win this video. The last film I watched that was a horror that I was expecting, I had high expectations for, was Halloween Ends, okay? I was I had high hopes for that one because I'm like, oh, uh, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride are, are two good act. I mean, Danny McBride is a good actor. He's comedic. He's He knows what he's doing. But then when you watch the film, then it was a whole letdown, which is opposite of when you watch a movie like Scream because I wasn't a Scream fan, okay? 
Like, for example, Scream. I wasn't a, a fan of Scream. And now that I've watched every film, uh, every Scream film, I'm like, it's way better than every Halloween film that's out there. So, so that's about it. So I do have to say that this film is dialogue heavy. Most people find it boring. But when you have these explosions that go throughout the film, because there's a lot of explosions that people, I mean, that just randomly appear during the, the film, which is unnecessary, but I guess they just decided to put him into the film, leading up to the actual explosion, to the real a hydrogen bomb explosion, then you can say, yeah, it's it's a decent film. Like I said, it's decent compared to all the other films I've ever watched before. So um, I'm giving it maybe a four out of five. It wasn't like the the best of the best, but it was, it's up there. It's like, a, would I probably watch it again? I would say probably, yeah, I would. I would probably watch it again. But not like people say, oh, spectacular, uh, fantastic, and, and the best of, of the best. No, I, I probably would go back to watch another horror film again or or watch a, an action movie or watch, I guess, just an action film or, or a horror movie. So that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll catch you guys in another video.